Welcome back to Studio 5. You know, there is nothing more constant in our lives than change. And yet, for something that is so common to all of us, change can oftentimes seem impossible to accomplish. Today, we've got an internal inventory, a four-question approach to change that will help make this process easier and more <laughs> successful. <laughs> Relationship coach Matt Townsend bringing home this month's theme, Celebrate Change. And you say in your 20-plus years of coaching, you found there is one thing that prevents people from changing. What Always. Yes. Yes, there's one thing, and it's you, you. <laughs> we are the biggest problems we have to overcome. We hold ourselves up. Because we, we make these goals like we think we're really going to live them, and then we, we don't really ever live them. Because what I believe is we have two goals going on simultaneously, competing goals. Oh. Okay. For example, I want to learn to talk really well with my wife. I want to communicate with her, goal number one. Uh -huh. But deeply underneath, but then every time we have a chance to talk, I don't talk. Every time there's an issue that comes up where we could get serious and talk, I'll make a joke and need to leave, remove myself, <laughs> go to the restroom. I've always got somewhere to go. And what I find out is because I usually have another goal that's hidden way underneath that no one ever talks about. Like what would that be? That might be I, I don't want to be hurt or I don't want to look stupid. So sure, I, lo I love you, I want to talk to you, I want to just talk your little ears off, but I don't want to be hurt. And as long as I have two goals that are competing, one's usually going to win. Mm. Can you predict which one will win? Yeah, that, that good talking one's going to be the, the losing good, one. That's the loser, you know, right. You know, well, you know what? Otherwise. That's the one we talk about. Is because I'm, I'm going to lose weight this year. I really am. I'm going to lose weight. That's my I'm going to go goal, to the gym. But I have another goal that really uh -huh. want to eat one of those pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. That's exactly right. And I don't want to have to exert myself. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll lose all the weight I want, but I have another goal. I don't want to exert myself. So okay. we've got to have four. There's four questions we're going to go through in the inventory. But before that, one of my favorite quotes, yeah. David Thoreau. Okay, for every thousand hacking at the leaves of evil, there is one striking at the root. We have so many of us that are, not that our goals are evil, but we're all trying to work on the leaves, mm -hmm. these great goals that everyone can see, but there's a root that we've got to go work on. And if we don't work on the root, we're never going to have a goal that makes it to a leaf. Okay, so question number one is Question what? number one is very simple. Question number one is, what is one thing, everybody out there in audience land, think of this, think of one thing that you know if you did it well, you did it consistently, would positively impact your life. So an isolated goal. This is just an isolated goal. This is the one you think of all the time. What's that one goal? If you did it well, you did it consistently, would dramatically impact your life. Now, just a real fun question, this isn't part of the questions, is why aren't you doing it? Mm. If you already know the goal, why haven't you done it already? And you're like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get help. I've been trying this one for years. But I need everyone out there in audience land to have a goal. So whenever we're talking about goals, people always say you should tell somebody your goal, uh -huh. you should write down your goal. Is that really important to the You know what, I used to believe process? it really was. In fact, but last night I read a study that says sometimes telling your goal sabotages them. But how? I don't know. I didn't read that far, but because um, I was really tired. But since if you tell your goal, or if you're writing your goal, you're held accountable for it. You have to, to who? Live up to it. To whoever you told. That's my idea. Nobody's I mean, gonna come and say, oh, 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 I thought you said you were gonna lose weight this year. Well, right. And at what point can you just own up to your own committed? Yeah. And this is the reason why we have the second question, though, because what we're full of, we, we also have our stated goals. The goal is that's out You're there. You're full of something different. We're than all I'm full of it. But yeah. The second though, <laughs> question, though, is the counterfeit, counterfeit results. A lot of us are doing things. We're actively involved working, seemingly on our goal, but we're doing things that are counter to the actual goal. So here's the question. What are you doing or not doing that keeps you from achieving the goal that you know is important? What are you doing or not doing that keeps you from doing that? So, I say I want to talk to my wife. That's my stated goal. What am I doing? Well, um, I'm getting really busy. I go carpool the kids. When an issue comes up, I time it out until I table it and tell her, let's talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Those are the counterfeit things I'm doing. Those aren't the things that are really leading me to where I want to be. So, can it be, is it, does, does it always have to be an action or can it be an idea too? Sometimes it could just be, yeah, I'm thinking other right. thoughts. Right. I'm, I'm doing other things. But there's always the counterfeit. Now, it's important that you notice what you're not doing. Okay, and at the very end, we're going to run through an example and show you how this whole thing comes together. Okay, and I would imagine some of those things that get in our way, some can be productive. We'd they're probably, very we'd productive. probably justify, hey, mm -hmm. I'm, do, I'm still doing some positive things on this area, that's right. but I'm not working toward the and goal. And so that's, really that's the quote, the enemy of the best is the good. The enemy of becoming the very best is when we settle for all these good counterfeits. Mm -hmm. Counterfeits mm -hmm. can keep us busy all day long. They just don't make and us the best. they're not bad. They're not that's bad. Yeah. They're great things. Okay. So then what, here's the deal. So we know our goal and we see our counterfeits. Then the next question is we have to find what is the competing goal? What is 
is the deeper fear, belief, or less flattering assumption that you are making that drives you to keep producing the counterfeits? Okay, question four. This is, and then the last question is just simply challenge that competing goal. You got to challenge whatever your fear is, okay? Let's go through one, all the way through, okay? For example, let's say that your stated goal is to go to the gym five nights a week and lose 15 pounds. Thanks for looking before, at that one. Yeah, I don't know why I just, yeah. I, I didn't even, I looked at your belly. Yeah, thanks. Um, that was weird. <laughs> but thanks for pointing that out on TV. So um, let's say my goal is to go to the gym five nights a week, lose 15 pounds before Christmas. Okay. That's my stated goal. Okay. My counterfeit though, so what am I doing or not doing that's leading to that goal? Well, I eat healthier, uh -huh. I drink more water, I sneak walks in the day, and I park my car farther away from the stores. Okay. But I'm not going to the gym five nights a week. So it's identifying again mm. what you're not uh -huh. doing. I'm not doing those are all counterfeits. They're great. They're all positive things, but I'm still not going to the gym. Then the next question is I need to figure out why. What's my deeper fear? What's the thing that really drives me to do those other four things instead of going to the gym? And this is what you might come up with. I don't want to look bad. And some of us, that might mean I might feel stupid because I don't know how to use all the equipment at the gym. Or I look ugly because I don't have cute clothes to wear to work out. Or I look fat when I work out. There's too many mirrors. <laughs> or I don't feel good about myself and I don't want others to look at me as if I'm not good enough. Okay. So those are the, that's the really dueling commitment. That's the other thing I'm more committed to are those fears. And then the last thing we got to figure out is so great. Now that you know what you're really about, you're really more committed to your fear of not looking bad than really going to lose 15 pounds mm -hmm. going to the gym. Now we just got to ask, what's a way that now that we know our fears that we could still go live our first goal? And it might mean that I need to go get better exercise equipment. Maybe I need to change my gym to a gym where there aren't people that are looking at me. Maybe I need to go at times when no one else shows up. Maybe I need to, um, maybe I need to just suffer the pain of this and feel the awkwardness of it. Get and deal it. with it so that then I can look good and then I can go to the gym and work out. Mm -hmm. The deal is if you don't get down to the root problem, there's always a dueling commitment. There's always a second goal that you're dealing with. And if you don't go down and hack that one out, you'll never accomplish the higher goal. It won't happen. Yeah. Uh, Sad, okay. but true. There, feel much, much more important now. We're hacking at the drum. Just say what? orange. <laughs> No, hers is more of a... Halloween. It's, yeah. It's very good. Where's your orange? Truth to be told... I can't tell you. First time I saw you was what? Like 10.30 this morning? I, mean, I didn't see you yeah. before, yeah. so we were... You we're guys just, need to talk. Or <laughs> I can help you with that. Communicate? Yeah. yeah. We have a date night coming up, by the way. You, you, you do. Talk to You do not this. want to... These are huge. If you want to have the most fun you've ever had with your partner and me. Um, <laughs> come to the seven <laughs> basic needs of every relationship. Friday, November 12th, 7 o'clock. It's at the Noah's in South Jordan. It's 35 bucks a couple. We laugh. We cry. It's better than cats. You have better than cats. It is. Uh, some of my friends went to your Ogden. Yes, I saw them. Date night, and they, they said you were rocking it. it they we loved rocked it. it. I, I rocked it like a rock star. Okay. I don't fun. know about that.